Hey, I think uh, I found our next target. Oi. Oh, sorry, hang on, I'll pause it just a minute. There you go. Yeah, yep. no, I think I've found our next target. Oh yeah, what's that? It's the Dark Doodad Nebula. The Dark Doodad Nebula? Yeah, Doodad. That can't be a real thing, surely. Yeah, no, it is. It's a proper, it's a proper name. Look, look. The Dark Doodad Nebula. <laughs> That's two. Oh well. I guess with a name like that, you can't not image it, really, can you? Yeah, I reckon. I mean, you can't not, can you? Nah. How about um, you go and set up the equipment, and I'll search up the coordinates. I, yep. You can't actually find it on Stellarium, so oh, really? okay. I'll have to go by the globular cluster next door to it. So yep. um, yeah, cool. And I'll see All you right. out there. Yep, I can do that. As you can see, behind the uh, weather's taken a turn for the better, uh, and about time too. Um, last night was clear, and tonight's supposed to be clear as well. And the nice thing is, there's going to be no moon till about 1:30, so I should be able to get uh, some nice images of the Doodad Nebula. Uh, and being a dark nebula, you don't want any um, light around at all. And it's not like I'll be using narrowband filters; I'll just be using um, LRGB. Uh, you can see the setup behind again is the red cat, exactly the same as I did for the dragons. Um, so yeah, he's hoping the, uh, the night's a good one. The wind's dropped, so that's really good. And uh, there's a lot of bird life um, floating around at the moment and making all sorts of nice bird songs. So um, yeah, should be a good night. So it should be um, nice and dark now for um, polar aligning. So I've um, got the ASI Air Pro set up, everything's connected, the camera's called to minus 10 degrees. So I'm just going to go to polar align, take an image. And it should solve that pretty quickly. Yep, and we're going to hit next, it's going to rotate it about 60 degrees. It's a beautiful dark sky up here at the moment. The Milky Way is super bright and you can really clearly see the um, large and small Magellanic clouds. Now I'm expecting this will be out by quite a bit. Usually when I start I have to move it to the right quite a fair bit. So it's now going to take its next image. Okay, and let's go. So it lets go. And oh, I'm a bit closer than I realised. I've been out by about seven on other nights, so we just shift the whole telescope, mount and everything over. I find that's a good way to start and get a little bit closer. And then, okay, that's not bad. So now I need to move it to the right. So I'll move it over to the right, and it needs to go actually down a bit. <laughs> Okay, that's pretty good. Now, the one thing I've noticed is that if I lock the uh, bottom sort of bolt things so that we've got the um, left and right sorted, it tends to mess up the, um, the altitude adjustment. So, um, as you can see, it'll go from 0.01 and it'll probably jump up to about here yeah, too, which is what it does. So that's why I then tighten off only two of the bolts and I leave the altitude adjustment just to finish off. And that's pretty good. I think that'll be fine. So we'll hit finish and we'll like driving a racing car super fast. Excellent. It's always nice to get a compliment. It's so good when you get the one where you slow. Doesn't mind telling you when you've been slow. Alright, now 
the next thing I want to do is come out of the polar line and we're going to go back to preview and I'm just going to go and load up an image that I have been doing of the doodad nebula um, the other night so it's NGC 4372 and we'll just take the luminance and I want to have this exact framing again so the thing to do is to just because I actually did this as a, more of a custom um, framing because I couldn't bring up the actual dark nebula I could only bring up the little um, uh, globular cluster there so um, I had to move it on the screen myself but since I've done these I can just hit go and it will play itself this image It does take a little while to do this sometimes, sometimes it's really quick, sometimes it'll take, there we go, that's pretty quick. And we just hit go to, and now the telescope will slew to the target, and um, it'll take an image and decide whether it is um, accurately aligned on the target or not, and if not, it'll just adjust it a bit and take another image. Usually it only takes two shots, to be honest. It's pretty quick, so it's finished slowing, it's settling, and now it's taking its image and checking to see if it's centered. And it, not quite, and it did a little adjustment, so I think usually after this it's, that's fine. And that is done. So now I need to go into uh, auto run and I need to decide oops I've gone the wrong one I need to decide what I'm going to be imaging tonight so uh, what filters so I'm just going to take that one off and I'm going to change this one to red I've done quite a few red but I'd like to do a few more and we'll just do say 20 of those and our exposure is 180, so three minutes. And we'll just tick that one. Then blue, 180, and we're gonna do th uh, 30 frames on that one. And then green, and then we'll do luminance again here. And we'll do just 60 second um, images again. So we're gonna start with a red filter, so I'm just gonna Touch the filter wheel and change the luminance to red. The filter wheel will move and then I need to come back to preview and I want to hit autofocus and hit play and let it run. And the autofocus feature actually works really well on this and I um, also really like the way um, the whole um, belt system works with the ZWO uh, focuser. Um, it's been w working really well. So we'll just let this run through and as you can see we've got a really nice u-curve here with all the points. Now the one thing I really like about what this um, autofocus feature does rather than just doing the u-curve and then coming back to the point where it thinks is the you know the spot-on area of focus it comes back and has a second run just around the area where it thought the uh, perfect focus was and does some smaller steps which is really good because it just really sort of hones it in on the, on the perfect focus so I think that's a, a great feature of the ASI Air Pro or the ASI Airs in general um, yeah as you feel like you've got a really nice focus point so it will do, usually takes about, that's about four. And at the very end, you'll see that the last one is, turns red and that means it's found the nice focus point. And it's um, happy with the focus, so that succeeded. So, and you can see the stars on the screen look pretty small. So I've got to get the auto guarding working. And it's going to have to do a calibration, so we'll let it run through that. Okay, so that's completed, and now it's going to start um, getting the guiding going. I'll let it settle down for a bit because it usually does a few 
funny movements initially and then it seems to settle down nicely so there's a little bit of wind tonight I'm not sure how that's going to affect it when there was no wind it was sitting around 0 0.28 0 0.28 0 0.3 um, but the other night um, when it was quite windy it was uh, more varying between 0.5 and 0.7 which wasn't quite so good we'll just hit so uh, we'll just clear that We'll come out because we can see on the other screen uh, what it's doing. It's sitting at 0 0.5, 0 0.48 at the moment, so that's good. And we'll get an exposure going and we'll see what we've got. I think I can see on the screen already a satellite has gone through. Okay, we've just got the last few seconds to run. Um, guiding's doing nicely at 0.39, happy about that. And let's just see this load up. And there it is. If I just touch the screen and remove everything else, you can see that sort of dark um, line. You can see there's a lot of stars in this area. Um, and you can see the globular cluster there. And that dark sort of line running up on a curve is the dark doodad nebula. So I'm just going to let this now run and uh, go inside and make a coffee. And uh, hope the wind stays low and the um, clouds stay away. Well, uh, I don't know what's going on with the weather, but I'm not complaining because uh, it's going to be clear again tonight. And actually the forecast says tomorrow night and the following night. So no doubt by then I'll be completely exhausted and uh, might even be wanting some clouds to come in at night. But no, I didn't say that. I, I don't want any clouds. Um, but yeah, so and it's good the moon will be up at 2.30. Uh, or should I say it's good the moon won't be up till 2.30. Uh, so the sky will be nice and dark and even better uh, being Sunday night a lot of people have gone home so uh, the places are all closed up and there shouldn't be any lights on so yeah I'm hoping for a good night tonight um, and carry on imaging the dark doodad nebula. Okay so I've got uh, Pixinsight open but don't panic I'm not going to run through my whole processing because um, I must admit I find processing these dark nebulae extremely difficult and um, I had to do it multiple times and there are steps along the way that I kind of have forgotten exactly what I did. So um, what I really wanted just to show you was what I um, did in order to deal with the problems I have with stars particularly when I have the red cat paired with the ASI 1600 because there is significant undersampling going on there. And I can kind of get away with it with the nebulosity, um, but my problem is the stars, and particularly in areas of the sky where there are very dense star fields, which is where the doodad nebula is. So if I show you here, this is uh, just the red filter, uh, and you can see there are a ton of stars back here. Um, here's part of the, the doodad here, globular cluster over here. And this parrot doesn't look too bad. Um, but as soon as you zoom in to any great extent, you can very quickly see that the stars are turning into squares. And the bigger ones even, as you zoom in a bit further, uh, get, then they're not too bad, but they get a little bit more blocky and there's a bit more sort of blurriness and they're not very well defined. But these here look um, terrible, they're just, they're just squares. And when you go into the globular cluster, it's just a massive squares, it looks horrible. So what I did was I went back and reprocessed the red, green and blue and I, through AstroPixel Processor, I got it to do two times drizzle. Now it does make you file sort of, well, I think it was more than two times, more than four times the size. But this is um, the result that I got. So again, let me just zoom out here. One thing you notice immediately is this seems to have less stars than this. And I think partly it's because some of the very small faint little squares in there uh, do disappear um, in the background but I think also because it just tightens everything up as far as the stars are concerned and there's not so much sort of merging and blurring over of pixels 
So we'll move uh, back into say this area here and again quite obviously we've got the, um, the blocky stars and if I just drag this across so we get the same area suddenly now you can see the stars are quite round and um, you can kind of see what I mean by more dark space in between whereas here all these sort of square pixels which are starting to overlap each other make it all look a little bit messy these suddenly now look very individual stars and round so it did an amazing job and then you can go ahead and you know uh, blend them together with your red green and blue to get your colored stars so this is what the first go I had the stars um, that weren't drizzled the colors in there you know we're starting to see some of the um, the sort of yellows and oranges and the blues over here but uh, it's just really square and horrible looking and uh, this is it drizzled um, which is an amazing difference so um, certainly going forward I'm going to be doing this um, with all my images if I'm using the 1600 with the red cat um, I haven't seen what it does to the nebulosity I might give that a go on my next um, image that I do with it but certainly I'll be doing it with the stars uh, so that when I remove the stars um, from the nebulosity I can I, it's much easier to play with um, these nice round stars um, before I put them back in than dealing with these squares so um, yeah look I hope um, you found that uh, video helpful um, if you have uh, maybe you could you know smash that like button no you don't want to smash the like button you might damage the screen I mean come on well it's it's what all the youtubers are saying now. just smash the like button. just bring the mouse up and just tap on the like the like button go on okay okay so if you want to just with the mouse delicately go up there and and hit that thumbs up um, yeah that would be great and if you're new to the channel uh, maybe consider subscribing. You should subscribe. Oh. Subscribe to the one channel. The one channel. Yes. Uh, what's this obsession you have with one no, everything? Oh, one must keep those thoughts to oneself, I think. That's the way I prefer it. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, um, yeah. If you want to subscribe, yes. even better. Anyway, um, clear skies, and we'll see you in the next video. Well, we should really do this again some, some other t another video, I reckon. Yeah, yeah. I'll mm, be up yeah. for that. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yes. Definitely. Yes. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll send out an email to, yep. to, to, to you guys. Can, yeah, yeah. can you send my usual okay. message? Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. the usual pile of big logs <laughs> on fire above, on the top of a mountain. Yeah. Yes, that's correct. Just no pictures because I just need the smoky words. Okay. Thank you. I'll, I'll keep it to words. I'll keep it to words. Okay. Yeah, no, that's good. That's good. Okay. Excellent. Yep. Yep. I'll be in yep. touch. Fantastic. Fantastic. I'll hear from you. I shall disappear now. <laughs>